Okay, well, we're, um, we have about 20 minutes left of our normal class period. Normally what we do is probably think was, uh, is um, maybe start another topic, but since there's so little time left, let's just uh, spend the rest of the time talking about the, the paper for discussion, and uh, next Monday we'll do some work on hydrodynamic voltammetry, and we'll probably try to get that finished up and start on the next chapter right away because we're a little behind where I'd want to be at this point. So, um, for the for the exam now, so we'll we'll include chapter 12 as part of the exam. So what we talked about today will also be on the exam. Mostly, I guess I would suggest most of the stuff that we talked about the previous week would still be on there, but don't expect the stuff we talked about today not on the exam. Uh, so we've got what? Uh, where do we start? I guess we get we started in um, chapter five. Is that right? And some of that chapter five we had in the last exam, but whatever we stopped, where we stopped on chapter five. It's a fair game. So chapter five, chapter six, chapter twelve, and. The, Appendix B, uh, simulations. All right, well, let's talk about the, uh, the uh, paper. I thought it was a good one because it talks about self-assembled monolayer and also has some interest for uh, electric kinetics. And so um, start out by asking for any comments or questions from the students and see what we can talk about. In the flight, there is what's meant by perm selectivity? Perm selectivity is um, is, uh, has to do with a little bit to, to the selectivity of, uh, of, uh, of a film. So the selectivity arises from the ability of the material to permeate into the film itself. And so some films, because of the partition of the coefficient, have uh, the ability to allow materials in and permeate through the film. Uh, so in this case, the ultra-thin monolayers because they're quite thin, should not have very good perm selectivity because there's hardly anything there for the, to keep something out, but they've added um, a, a chemical effect on top of it to keep things out as well, so. What's the goal of this research? Anybody have any idea what, what they're looking for? What they want to, what they want to do, what they want to accomplish, or what do they think they accomplished in this paper? Sensitivity. Increase sensitivity. For what? Biosensors. The sensors. Biological, biological sensors. Yeah. Biological sensors. Uh, why? Why are they worried about it? What's the? Why would they have to increase the sensitivity? What's the? So they okay. They're increasing the sensitivity. What's the? How? What's the means to doing this uh, sensitivity increase? What's the, What are they doing to increase the sensitivity? Smaller chain well, they're modif well, first of all, I guess ultimately they're modifying the electrode to, to increase the sensitivity, right? They're adding this monolayer of material in there. What else? So, how are they, what's this monolayer going to do for them? What's the point of the monolayer? It's supposed to increase the sensitivity. How is it going to do that? Faster electron transfer. All right. 
Uh, normally, if I put a spacer group between the electrode and the molecules in solution, I wouldn't expect the electron transfer to increase, would you? No. So why why would why would they think about having fast electron transfer with this polymer film on the surface? Is the goal really to increase the rate of electron transfer? The goal is to prepare some, uh, they say that some new surfaces that have well, uh, well known features on the surface that doesn't affect the electron transfer. So they say well defined electrode surfaces at which surface features such, such as charge and hydrophobicity can be easily controlled. Right. This is, is that the goal of the, the production of these new electrodes? Well, I think that's a, that is a certainly part of their, that, I mean, that's a very large scale goal, I guess, is to make an electrode with fixed properties. It's always, it's always an interest to electrochemists to make electrodes that have different properties and, uh, well-defined properties in particular. So if, at least if they don't know, if it doesn't do exactly what they want, they know exactly what it's going to do. So that's an important aspect. So but I think there's a, there's a reason that they're worried about the kinetics of, in this, for these particular electrodes that we haven't examined yet. What's the, you know, Laura said fast kinetics is important. Nimad says, or well-defined electrodes are important, which is, uh, so how do these come together to, to produce a more sensitive electrode? Control the electrochemical response. Right. How are we gonna control it? What's, what's, the, what's the control mechanism here? Well, they can make the surface more or less hydrophobic. Right. So how's that going to help us? What's the hydrophobicity have to do in there? You can increase the kinetics. Of what? Of the biological molecule. Why? Why would it why would it make any difference? Because they're slow on a bare electrode. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you're kind of arguing in circles here. Let's, okay. let's yeah, but <laughs> what is electrode passive? Passivation. Electrode passivation means that you somehow made the electrode inactive. You you de deactivated it. So the, this this is done by the co-assembly of one more hydrophilic part and more hydrophobic part. Yeah. This is just using thiotic thio acid. With yeah. One this is the one. Well, okay, right. They're putting thio, whatever, thio, uh, whatever it is. Thioctic acid? Thioctic acid, yeah. And one exam thio, this is more hydrophobic. Right. So the, well, the thioctic, what's it have on it that's going to make it that's something to be interested in? Come to all right, so it's got a carboxylic group at the end, and what kind, what chemical properties is that carboxylic acid giving us to the film? What's it? Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. Hydrophilic. 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 Water, you know, it's going to be mm -hmm. under normal conditions, under reasonable acidic conditions, it's going to be deprotonated, or it's under normal P neutral pH, it's going to be deprotonated, right? It's going to have a negative charge on the thing. And they're doing experiments under essentially neutral conditions, I think. So with the thioctic acid, is going to add some aspect of negative charge at the end of the film. And it's also about, that's also a hydrophilic layer on the end, right? They good. Fast kinetics on the surface. Right. And so the 
why, why are they mixing those two together? Why are they mixing the neutral and the thioctic acid monolayers together? What's the point of that? Why don't they just, that seems to be an important thing they're talking about. Give order to the monolayer? Yeah, it keeps it ordered, I suppose. You want a, you want a well-defined surface, but you also want to titrate in the amount of hydrophobicity, right? You want to be able to, just by changing the relative differences and the, the relative ratio of those two, you can make it all neutral or all active or all basically hydrophobic. So you change the ratio of hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophobicity on the electrode surface. And that's kind of their game plan, right? They're gonna try to turn a knob, change the, hydro, the ratio of those two, and so try to run the gamut from a very hydrophobic to a very hydrophilic surface. And uh, what's the reason why biological materials in general are not are often problematic at non, at normal metal electrodes? They, they mentioned that. Does there any, do you remember seeing that? Why is it a problem? The, the reaction or reactions are irreversible. Yeah. Like they're electrodes with biological substances. All right, it's the same problem we talked about just today in class with NAD, NADH, electrochemistry. It's irreversible. It uh, tends to, once it oxidizes, it tends to stick and decompose on the electrode surface. Because, usually because the metal has enough catalytic activity just in, as a metal to cause these things. Also, these materials are very large generally, so uh, in general, they prefer to be absorbed to some surface rather than being in, present in solution. So. Uh, if you mix, so what, what would happen, suppose you had a material that has a very, that was very large and bulky and had a positive charge on the electrode, a protein, for example, it may or may not have a positive charge, but it probably, does, a lot of times it does have a positive charge. What would happen if it comes to this thioctic uh, monolayer and what's gonna happen to it? Is it going to be attracted, repelled? Is it going to be, be faster, slower? Um, probably it's going to be attracted, right? Because electrostatic interaction there. But suppose it's attracted so strongly that it sticks to the electrode surface, or sticks to that layer, never comes off. Is that a, is that what we want? No. Yeah. So we can. So one of the things that they were interested in doing is for a particular type of analysis, they can dial in just enough hydrophilicity or neutral or uh, negative charge to attract a protein to the surface and to allow the reaction to take place, but not so negative the charge that, that it sticks. So they can adjust that ratio of the different things. They actually didn't use proteins. They used uh, some charged species, ruthenium hexamine and um, ferrous cyanide. They talk about the capacitance of the electrode. I'm not sure that's that critical. You can see they've talked about the Phi 2 effect and so on. Um, one thing that you should note is that the uh, dielectric constant, the capacitance of, um, of the electrode See, it changes quite a bit depending on the um, material. Now they say that the the bare electrode has a capacitance of 72 microfarads per square centimeter. That's on page 2770. Uh, with the monolayer on top, you see much lower capacitance uh, for the uh, C6 style, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2 um, microfarads per square centimeter. So there that monolayer is acting basically as a spacing, spacer group to get the ions away from the electric surface, decreasing capacitance. Also the dielectric constant, also tabulated there in table one, is low, so the capacitance also drops because the dielectric constant of that film is low. So you're adding, essentially you're adding a layer of plastic on the metal surface, a very thin one, but that's what you've got on the electric surface. Um, it's not like plastic 
it was applied plastic, but it also was thin enough that the material could actually get through the surface as well. Um, so let's look at figures one through three. Can we explain the results of the figures based on the monolayer type? Let's look at figure one. The solid, let's go down and see the solidized TA monolith. TA stands for what? Bio. Bionic acid. Bionic acid. Bionic acid. Okay. So, what's that kind of surface? That a, that's a hydrophilic surface, correct? Mm -hmm. So we expect that that surface would be well, it's negatively charged. So the ruthenium hexamine is going to be attracted to that surface most likely. Uh, so you see really no, very little change. They don't really show you what happens if it's a, a bare electrode, but a uh, bare electrode you'd have a very look, reversible looking wave. With the uh, one to one ratio of the alkane C6 monolayer, you see uh, basically no difference. If it's one to 100, now what happens to the response? It drops. Yeah, yeah. Right. Why does that happen? What do you think? No interaction, so it's not equal to the Or it's not that far. Right. Um, well, yeah, the, the rate of electron transfer obviously has dropped significantly. It's not zero because there is, with the 1 to 100, there's still some current increase there, suggesting that there is some electron transfer occurring. It's very low. So why, why, what explanation could you come up with for why the, the rate would be lower? I mean, you're not, you're, you're attracting it to it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's being repelled just because it's a neutral end point, right? Is there any reason to think that there's a, re, a repelling of the ruthenium hexamine molecule? You've got, at the end, you've got this alkane. Here's your ruthenium hexamine. Is it going to be repelled by that alkane end? No. I mean, if that's a, if that's a carboxylate at the end, it's going to be certainly attracted to it, right? But it's not going to be repelled. In the neutral. So what's the? Why is there a big difference in the rate? What's what's their explanation for that? response becomes indistinguishable from background. Yeah. Well, it's a similar results have been previously reported, but no satisfying explanation has been given in that. Yeah. And then they said um, the, simplest, the simplest explanation is that the high charge density of the ruthenium hexamine higher than the Ferrocyanate prevent its access to the higher surface. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to know. I think a reasonable explanation is that the um, that the reason they're getting electron transfer in the normal film is that it's not very ordered. In other words, we expect the film to all line up like so, marching along, but. In fact, it's probably likely that with the mixture, especially, you don't see a, 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 a selective film in the sense that it's that it's uh, completely ordered in preventing material from getting in. Or you can get the electrode; the material can be inserted in in the film enough to get some electron transfer to it. Whereas with the uh, more high proportion of the alkane thiols. They're very ordered, and so there's no way for the ruthenium hexamine to get close to the electrode surface, and that's that's probably the reason. And you can compare. Excuse me, I'm sorry. You can compare that to, um, and the reason that you see it with, say, if you look at Figure uh, Two, uh, pH 1.5, you see a 
a nice curve. And so what's happening at pH 1.5 that's different at pH uh, 7.4 in figure one? We have carboxylate because it's not carboxylate. It's not ionized. Yeah, the carboxylate's not ionized, right? It's uh, PKA is carboxylate's about four, so 4.7. So we expect a neutral surface there. So should we again? We don't really expect any any disordering or any. I guess I should say any. Um, R repelling of the surface. In other words, we've got a negative ferrous cyanide now in a, in a, in a neutral species. So again, just like ruthenium hexamine, we don't see any repelling of the surface, but uh, unlike the ruthenium hexamine on the neutral species, on the neutral surface, now we see good results. And so that's, a, that's kind of, a, that's the reason for the disjoint in their explanation. They don't understand why the neutral surface in figure one and the neutral surface in figure uh, two gives such different results. I think it's probably because in the in figure one, uh, even this neutral surface is still not an or as ordered as the as the neutral surface in figure or in figure two. Then neutral the neutral surface is not as ordered as the neutral surface in figure one, and uh, that's probably the reason. And the addition, addition of the alkane thiols adds additional amounts of ordering until you get a, a reasonable blocking of the behavior. In uh, figure three, now you see what you'd expect with the pH 7.4. Now again, ionized carboxylate groups will completely block the ferrous ionide. That's the solid line there, right? Because even if it's not ordered, we still have a large amount of negative charge on the surface of the electrode, right? It's negatively charged, and so uh, we don't have to have an ordered surface to block things. It's got this large charge on the surface. And then as we, t as we put in more of the uh, monolayer, alkane monolayer, it, uh, it becomes more ordered. Um, so. The, uh, the data, you kind of expect that figures two and three for the C6, the, the C6 style light monolayer, which is this kind of um, drawn out wave there, and this C6 monolayer here should be similar, and they're not that similar. So, those are. There's a question what the, there is still that pH difference there. Um, so they, they, they have a fairly complicated uh, set of data there, but. The solvent how the electrolyte is also different in figure two and in figure three. Yeah. Here they say that that um, perchlorate form a salt in the surface and limit also the reaction. Yeah, that that is possible. It's a possible thing. All right, they did, they did do some biological-like molecules with um, quinone and dopamine, but so what's the basis of their, again, their conclusion that they should, may have a more sensitive or selective monolayers? What's the selectivity going to be based on? How are they going to selectively detect things with these sort of things. And we've talked about it, but let's summarize. The head group uh, right. could be changed in different pHs. Right, we can basically in this idea we can dial in the hydrophobicity of the surface, changing it to whatever we need to be to 
say, make sure that only cations or only anions get near the surface to be detected, right? So why would that increase sensitivity? What, 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 what will we have done if we do that to make the sensitivity of our electrode better? Is that, would it necessarily make it, uh, the response of a particular, for a particular molecule larger? Did we see any evidence of that? I mean, you can think of sensitivity as, okay, I've got more signal for a given amount of material, right? So do we see any evidence that we've got more signal for a particular molecule? What about the, we didn't look at dopamine, what about dopamine and dopac? It's possible we could. Yeah, or yeah. It's possible we can if we have a um, material that adsorbs onto the surface and because the response is proportional to the scan rate, we might increase our current because we've got a higher, uh, we've got a higher signal because of the tr absorption rather than a diffusion-based process. Um, but sen sensitivity just doesn't rely on the fact that you may have a more, a higher signal. It also relies on the fact that your noise level has decreased as well. So sensitivity is not, higher signals, it's a, it's a higher signal to noise ratio. So if we have a high background signal and a high signal from the material trying to detect, it doesn't do as much good. So if we keep, even if we keep the signal the same, if we can lower the background on our material, then that's as good as, as increasing the signal uh, that way. So sensitivity can be improved not only by increasing the signal like we see maybe with dopamine, but also by lowering the background due to, say, things like anionic impurities or something that we'd like to exclude from the electron transfer process. Oh, that way. A, a big one for uh, biological materials is ascorbic acid, ascorbate, which is present usually in excess or larger concentrations, say, dopamine, and uh, uh, it's a neutral, it's a, ne it's a negative species. So in this case, dopamine, positively charged species, uh, and uh, the neutral uh, will exclude, then the, the film will exclude uh, ascorbic acid because it's a negatively charged species. Well, we better stop here and uh, we'll um, see you on Saturday, I guess.